Hi guys and welcome to another week of State of the Market. I am Mark Vittori and I am joined by my co-host Jennifer Boudol and this week we have a jam-packed episode on the latest news across Melbourne and Brisbane. Just when the Gold Coast thought it was shaking off its boom-bust reputation, a pending shift in the planning foundations on which the city is built threatened to burst a seemingly bulletproof development bubble. Feeling the worst Developers are now rushing to lodge plans in a bid to future-proof their pipelines from the constraints of looming planning scheme amendments. The proposed amendments effectively reduce the density along the city's well, well-established coastal strip through an increased setback, reduced building heights and down zoning. Every developer is screaming to lodge DAs, as are we, says one of the city's most prolific high-rise developers, Morris Property Group, Director Barry Morris. Categorically increasingly setback and decreasing height limits does have an impact on development yield. It's simple maths, which I think is pretty yeah. evident. Yeah. yeah. Barry Morris also said the proposed amendments reflect a major shift in the council's planning strategy and if adopted will radically impact the Gold Coast de- developments landscape and the growth of the city um, as a whole. It is being said that it, it will have the greatest detrimental impact on the provision of the housing in the city where previous amendments have been the opposite, that promoted more developments and enhanced housings. So reports have also stated that the combined effect of the proposed developments is to put overall pressure on development feasibility which already relies heavily on performance outcomes and at a time when the apartment market is already sensitive to economic conditions. It also concludes that the changes will effectively reduce yields, having an adverse impact on project viability, resulting in land in high density areas of the city being effectively sterilized for further development due to the greater setback and lot consolidation requirements. Hmm, Fantastic. So guys, moving to Melbourne now. Melbourne Racing Club is pushing ahead with plans for the $3.5 billion redevelopment of Sandown Racecourse, a major strategic urban renewal project in the city's southeast. The Racing Club has submitted plans to rezone the historic racecourse, 25 kilometres from Melbourne's CBD, for residential use with the Greater Dandenong Council. The club has been feeling out plans to develop the site since 2017 after previously stating publicly that the venue, popular with races but not the public, burns a $5 million hole in its balance sheet annually, which is quite huge. If approved, the site's rezoning would potentially enable 112 hectare horse and motor racing venue to be transformed into a 7,500 home master planned estate. The redevelopment would also feature a new school, community centre, hospitality and entertainment venue near Princess Highway, as well as 12,000 square metres of retail space, including a full-line supermarket, 8,000 square metres of non-retail commercial use, creating upwards of 600 ongoing jobs. Under the plans, the club will deliver a range of home typologies to meet the needs of Melbourne's growing population that focuses on livability, leveraging the site's proximity to Sandon Park Railway Station. The master plan is developed um, will be divided into four stages to be completed over a 20-year construction schedule with separate permits required for each stage if it does go through, which is quite interesting. Mm. Um, Quite some news to hear on a Tuesday for you guys. However, if you'd like to know more about how we can help you on your investment journey through real estate, please get into contact with Mark or myself directly to get a better understanding of how we can help you with your long-term needs. And if you have any questions or want us to go through a topic, please direct inbox us or comment below and we'll see you next week. Have a good day.